Oh, hmm. This is a bit dingy. Oh well. Come on out. Coast is clear. No, this doesn't seem too different. Where are we? I'm not sure. I didn't check any of the readings. Don't know if the atmosphere is okay. Could be breathing in deadly air right now. What? Or well, shouldn't we get back in the TARDIS quickly? Or is it too late? Or I could be pulling your leg. Oh, don't do that. I've only got your word to go off. Uh, apologies. I'll just lock the TARDIS. So what's the deal? Where have you taken us now? Home, actually. Where on earth? Though I set us to a random time period. I thought you'd be interested in looking at your history. Or future, maybe. Who knows? Oh, brilliant. Man, seeing a different side of home seems so weird yet cool. Although, I can't say this is the best first impression. Yes. I think we're in a back alley somewhere. At least it's a quiet place to materialise. Let's get out there and go see where we really are. Yes, please. Ah, that's more like it. Welcome to London, Sophie. Seemingly a little before your time. Wow, oh my god, it's so different, yet yeah, it's without a doubt the same. Yes, it's quite remarkable, isn't it? What your people can achieve, human progress. But all the while, the mark you leave is always recognisable, distinct. Look at it all, cars running on wheels and petrol. The buildings are new, yet they would seem ancient for my time. The fashion? Well, actually, that doesn't look too different from mine. Flashy and colourful. But I can tell these people are from another time. Hmm. Judging from the technology, the smell of the air, the design of the shops and clothes and all, I'd say this is the late 20th century. How late are we talking? I mean, I come from the 2060s. Have we gone sooner or later than the 1960s? Oh, later, Sophie, later. I reckon the 80s. So this is my world about 80 years in the past. Fascinating, but a little tame maybe. You've seen alien worlds and space vessels. I think I could handle a little further back, you know. Don't act so disappointed. This is one of my favourite eras of your planet. It's so vibrant, so filled with passion and creativity. Music and movies and shows being colourful and innovative. This is also one of the more peaceful times comparatively. You say that like it's some kind of golden age where everything is perfect, but I'm pretty sure there's still wars and violence. Hmm, quite true, yes. But using that logic, there's not one moment of your history that's perfect or without flaws. Well, yeah, you're right. But here and now I'd say things are just far enough away from past conflicts and not too close to new problems. A moment to breathe and relax. And you lot made the most of it. Wanna go see? Definitely. Let's go look around. Ooh. Well, let's hope I've got the right currency on me. Okay. I admit, the AGs are pretty cool. See? Don't knock it till you try it. These clothes are great. I'll try them on later. And this food is perfect. Mm. You can't be old-fashioned British fish and chips. Mm. But that was a weird order you had. Fish fingers and custard. I haven't tried it in ages. Delicious. What's that little hut thing on the side of the road? Looks like there's a guy inside. Is it a shop? Um, pop-up news agents by the look of it. Yeah, some people have these little portable shops to open on the street. Like a food van. It's a way to run a small business, and uh, sell... Oh! Oh, of course! Doctor? I think I know that man. 
Let's give him a visit. Roll up, roll up. Get your local newspapers in. We've got local news, international news, comics, word crosses, anything paper related, really. Ah, hello, sir, madam. What can I get you to? Charlie Anderson. Great to see you, my friend. How's business? Uh, sorry, mate. Don't recognise you. When have we met? Was I drunk? Oh, right. The face, yes. Well, uh, let me jog your memory for you. I've saved you and lots of other people from aliens. I travel in time in a blue box. I've got two hearts, and, uh... I use one of these. Doctor, blimey, you're back. How have you been, mate? Let me give you a handshake. Not too bad at all. Everything good with you? Well, same old, really. No invasions, at least. Still making decent money, keeping this thing afloat. Oh, Charlie, allow me to introduce my friend, Sophie. Sophie, this is Charlie Anderson, an old friend of mine. Sophie Williams, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, miss. I've met a few of the Doctor's friends over the years, and seen a few of his faces. You should take better care of yourself, Doc. Uh, faces? Could I have a look at today's paper, Charlie? Sure, here's the local issue. Here you go, Sophie. Have a look at that. October 1985. 80 years exactly. So where'd you come from, miss, if you don't mind me asking? No, the Doctor, you could be from Mars. <laughs> That's okay. I'm from Earth, only a few cities away, although... I'm from the year 2065. Jesus, this must feel like ancient times to you then. Uh, actually, it's growing on me quite a lot. 1985. Well, there's already such great stuff to talk about. We are the world. India wins in cricket. The Easter Parade. Back to the Future. Live Aid. Some great cartoons. Mario and A View to Kill. Considering you've got the whole universe, you really have a fascination with Earth, don't you? I appreciate some quality stuff when I see it. And you must sound so strange to everyone walking by. You got a lot of weird looks earlier. You get used to it. The doc's just naturally like that. But you might know him better than me by now. I don't know. So what about you then? How do you know the Doctor Charlie? Or should I say, Mr Anderson? Sorry? Matrix of the late 90s. Oh, right. Hmm. Well, the Doctor simply came to my shop looking for comics a few times. And each time he showed up, some alien things would come and want to cause mayhem. More like they were already here, and I was the one to flush them out. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, he saved my life a few times. I owe him one. Speaking of owing, do you mind if I borrow some comics? Heh, <laughs> still into those. Well, who am I to judge? These ones are okay, I guess. But the industry's kind of going under at the minute. It's not doing too great. Ah, uh, give it about 20 years, Charlie. And these things will be booming again. Mark my words. Doctor, look at this. The headline here. Oh, you're right. Snatchers strike again. Local police continues to be puzzled by the strange disappearances and warn people to stay inside at night and to visit loved ones' graves whilst they can. Charlie, what's all this about? Well, it started out as body snatching. You know, graves being dug up. But then people start going missing. Both have been going on for a few months now. Is that a job for us? Sounds like it is. What do you reckon, Charlie? Do you want to help us out? I don't know, Doc. I mean, people go missing around here all the time. It's not alien. You don't have to fix all our problems. And why shouldn't I? Alien or not, I'm here to help out. Isn't that right? Well, all right then. I wasn't long from closing the shop anyway. How about we head back to mine and get some tools and I'll show you where to look. Good man. We'll drop our stuff off somewhere safe. Ready, Sophie? It's hardly ever just a normal day with you, is it? Not really. The sun's starting to go down. Getting late, and our kidnappers will start making their rounds, and we'll be waiting. Not as bait, I hope. Only if absolutely necessary. We'll head back to my place first, pack my stuff away, then get some torches and maps. What are you thinking, Doc? Good old stakeout? Right on it, Charlie. If we get lucky, and something happens, we'll judge what to do based on what we see. If it's just blokes with shovels, 
a gang with equipment, or aliens with whatever. Then we decide whether to follow, come back another day, or something else. Get captured? Maybe. Hopefully not. Uh, probably, yes. Well, sounds like a plan at least. Here we are. I'll head inside if you guys don't mind waiting out here. We'll be fine. Charlie, do you want to know some facts about the future? Like, advancements? Yeah, sure. Go on. <clears throat> Sophie? Oh, it's not spoilery. Okay, then. Where I come from, keys are few and far between. We use fingerprints and voices to get into our own homes. Really? Sounds convenient. Yeah, I've got my own house. They've become easier to afford in recent years. It's fully integrated with the latest tech. Richer people can afford robot butlers and self-cleaning houses. Though, they look silly if you ask me. <laughs> You're making me jealous. I've got to come for a trip with you sometime, Doctor. Be back soon. You know, you could do that. Huh? With the TARDIS, more technological on the outside. I mean, a time machine, and you just use a key. I, uh, prefer being old-fashioned. Doctor? Hmm. Can't help but feel like he's a bit off. In what way? You get the sense he's not telling you something. I'm probably just being nosy. Don't want to make judgments on his personal life. Doctor, when Charlie first saw you, he didn't recognise you, and he mentioned you having faces? Are you, like, a shapeshifter? Oh, uh, sort of. You know the saying, cats have nine lives? Well, imagine that, but real. When a tunnel's body is dying, we can replace it with a new one. Head to toe, a completely new skin. Wow, that sounds extreme. So you're, like, invincible then. And what counts as dying? Like, do you change from a car crash? Slow down, slow down. No, I'm not invincible. I could still be killed through the regeneration. And it only happens when there's no hope of the body surviving. Although I'm still the same person underneath, it does affect me a little bit mentally, so I can act a bit different. Well, that's plastic surgery on a level well above even my time. Well, it's not so different to humans, really. You're all different people at different stages of our lives, mentally and physically. Hmm, so what have you looked like then? All sorts, really. From old and hairy to young and skinny, black and white. I could have been anybody walking down the street, and you wouldn't know. My last body was tall and skinny with short blonde hair. <laughs> cool. I've even been a woman a few times. Hold on, wait. What, seriously? Here we go. Torches, and this town map to the cemetery not too far from here. Right, let's go, Ghostbusters. You picked a creepy one, didn't you, Charlie? Well, it was the closest cemetery, but yeah, it is a bit worse for wear. How long have we been sitting here? Half an hour? An hour? It's a stakeout, Sophie. It'll take time. Remember, patience is a virtue and all that? Well, that's if anything ever happens, or if it happens here. I'm pretty sure this place has been here once before. There's a chance they'll come back again. This might be a long night, folks, so just settle in and get ready Wait, for a... Wait, you guys hear that? Look, over there. Get down, behind this pillar. Alright, the grids are here. Start digging. So just blows with shovels in. Possibly a gang? Oh, so much for a long night. Seems you got lucky. Yes, quite lucky. They don't seem to be wearing any uniforms or anything that identifies them. Looks like there's about five of them. They didn't waste any time either. They certainly know what we're doing by now. So, what's the plan, Doc? What do we do? I'm not sure. I can't tell enough just from this. Why are they doing it? And where might they be going? We could just ask them. What? Well, they seem professional enough. They won't want to be followed. And we haven't got enough chance to find them, dog. Why don't you use that psychic thing and convince them that we're with them? No, oh, it doesn't make enough sense. Random people that clearly didn't come with body snatching equipment claim they'd be new recruits. Or oh, maybe we'll just try following them. 
They've got some. Ah! What was that? Boy, who's there? Oh, sorry. Hold on. What are they holding? Guns? Now that's interesting. It's alright. Don't shoot. I'm not armed. Come on out, slowly. No, oh, I knew this would happen. You two stay here. No point you getting caught up in this. We spotted you lot now. All of you stand up and come here, slowly. No tricks. Never mind. All right, we're coming. Don't get itchy trigger fingers. Looks like we are going with them after all. That's far enough. Just stand there and keep your hands up. Hands up? Yep, definitely staying up. No interest in doing otherwise. Those weapons you guys have, they're not exactly what I'd call 80s. Not exactly what I'd call human, really. Who are you? You with the police? Nope. Just some locals who want to do a bit of investigating. Well, you made a very poor choice. Yes, I know. Boys, cover those greys back up. Change of plans. We're not body snatching tonight. We're kidnapping. Oh, brilliant. Alright, my man will stay behind you. Follow me and don't try anything stupid. Yep, you got it. How long was that ladder? I lost track. But we're far underground. This place looks industrial. Not exactly kept clean. Lots of workers running around. I wonder if they're here freely. So this is definitely alien stuff, right? Oh, how could you tell? It smells awful, like burning metal and rotten meat. This operation has been orchestrated for a while. But what are they doing? Are they taking people simply as a workforce? And if so, what for? Clearly whoever's doing this has enough resources on their own. What are the bodies? What are they for? Keep moving and pump down while you're at it. You don't seem very concerned about how much we know. How casually we talk about alien technology. The masters want to see you. They'll have you for themselves. Doctor, look. Those look like bodies. They're strapped and wired up. Those screens seem like they're monitoring them. I reckon these are experiments of some kind. These people aren't faced by any of this. Either whoever's in charge made a very convincing argument, maybe used mind control, or... Or... or these people are walking corpses. Charlie I did say it started with body snatching. Oh. I hope for the first option. Wait here. The masters will come soon. Oh, don't worry. We're not going anywhere. I want to meet these masters of yours. Let's just hope they're willing to negotiate. This place is starting to give me the creeps. Dark and deadly. What situation have you got us into now, Doctor? Well, it was never going to be good. I can feel the energy in this place. Look, if I put my ring on this generator looking thing here... Slight vibration. This place has got plenty of power going through it, though it does seem slightly suppressed. We preserve maximum power for when it is necessary. That is now. You men, turn up those generators. Prepare for the master's arrival. Wrong. I know who they are. I brought us into something terrible. You have been identified. You are the doctor. Oh, brilliant 
into observation there. You will answer our questions, Time Lord. You will obey the Daleks. Well, you know me. I'm not a fan of that. How are they, Doctor? Big metal death machines. You are now prisoners of the Daleks. Obey. Correct. Doctor, I can't help but think, but I know them. I'm not sure, but I might have seen them in history lessons years back or something. Likely. They have and will come to this world a few times. These are the Daleks from Planet Scarrow. They are the single deadliest life form in the known universe. Life forms? Oh yes. What you're looking at is merely the armored shell of the Daleks. Inside is a perfectly engineered ball of hate. What do they do? Or want? Kill everything that isn't Dalek. That's the long and the short of it. Judging by your designs, this is somewhere post-Civil War, or something earlier, right? Enough, Doctor. Why have you come? Were you aware of the Daleks' presence in this space-time location? No, I wasn't. I'd rather go about my days wishing to never see you again. Wishing you didn't exist. If the Doctor is here, his TARDIS will be nearby. Where is your time machine located, Doctor? You're not gonna get to me that easily. You and your companions are under our control now, Doctor. You may have guns and armies, but I have the advantage of my mind. Don't underestimate it. So what's this all about then, Doctor? What are they doing here? Good question. Because so far this doesn't look quite right for any kind of invasion. How many Daleks are here? If you want my cooperation, then answer my questions. Got it? Three Dalek units. Just you three. And obedient slaves and body snatching. Ah, I think I get it now. This is a research team. Dalek scientific team assigned on site research of humankind development and biological activity. The Daleks have long fought humanity. We have had many victories. But many losses too. Our objective is to analyze the humans and experiment. Learn how they are so resilient and create superior copies. The human factor, eh? Their ability to constantly survive. Dalek Sec would be proud. That's what's been going on here. You're converting these people into Dalek drones. Obedient little helpers to... Oh. Oh no. Doctor? Oh, of course. It all matches up now. Everything falls into place. Isn't that right, Charlie? I'm afraid so, Doctor. What? I don't understand. What's he saying? I am one of these drones, Miss Williams. I've been so from the start. How could you? I knew something was off about you. That's why we ended up here so easily. Initially we wanted you not to get involved. But when we knew you wouldn't say no, we laid a trap. While I was in my flat I contacted Control and told them you were here. We arranged for your capture. I took my men to pre-arranged location as planned and waited for you, expecting you. It was a setup. You did that to us. Charlie, listen to me. Whatever they've done to you, it doesn't change who you are underneath. Who says I'm the real Charlie? What? This unit is the first of our cloning experiments, an identical copy. Copies? You're a clone? We are all either under Dalek mind control or reanimation. I myself am in charge of these slaves. But me? I'm something a bit more, let's say, special. Special? Oh, you Daleks. You've made a terrible mistake. Explain. You being here is bad enough. Kidnapping and tampering with human life will get me angry, but taking one of my friends, that's where you've gone too far. You are powerless to stop what has already happened, Doctor. 
with you as our prisoner, our experiments will increase tenfold. Perhaps even expand to Time Lord DNA. Well, you would be so sure of yourselves, obviously. I mean, you've got me, right? Sophie, take my hand. Right. All locked up, safe underground. This room, for instance. You've got some generators here, but they're probably just a small part of bigger ones. Don't want to put me anywhere too dangerous, do you? Except it doesn't matter where you keep me. I'm always dangerous. Run, Sophie! The doctor is escaping. Stop him. Stop him. The doctor must not be permitted to interfere with our plans. Parameters changed. Find the doctor and his associate and destroy them on site. Exterminate. We obey. Exterminate. We obey. Exterminate. <coughs> we obey. We obey. Find, Find them. them. Sophie, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Those guards will be out to get us. If we're lucky, we'll bump into them, and not the Daleks. Doctor, slow down for a moment. I haven't seen you quite like this before. You need to think straight. Sophie, we don't have time. We have to find a way to stop this now, before the Daleks cause any more damage. You're angry, scared maybe. I'm sorry about Charlie. You, you know these things, these Daleks, and they know you. So you... You've fought them before? Sometimes by choice, sometimes not. But yes, I'm always there to stop them. They are more deadly than you can imagine. And they've taken so much from me and so many others. Last time we met, they even took my life. That was when it happened. And I regenerated. No point dwelling on that now. Need to focus. Now the fact that this is a small science team gives us a fighting chance. Even one Dalek is still deadly though. But not when you're around. Exactly. Come on. I've got some ideas. Status. No indication of the Doctor, Commander. Have the slaves search this entire base and continue. The Doctor must be found. I obey. Doctor, over here! Ah, this place looks important. Looks like a central lab. Now we're talking. Big tubes of experiments and computers open for me to take a peek. Let's see if I can hack into this. Any luck? <sighs> Going well. I should be able to lock anyone else out of the system. It seems this place started out as their ship. They came down to excavate a site, then teleported the ship here and made it a base. Without anyone noticing? They were careful. Plus, humans aren't very observant. Ah, here's some information. This group is separate from the main Dalek fleet. What does that mean for us? They're allowed to be here, but if anything goes wrong, they're on their own. High Command won't send reinforcements if they're in trouble. We can get rid of this place without the threat of payback. Doctor, these big glass tube things. Someone's inside. Another body to experiment on, unfortunately. No, but come on, look at them. Is that... It's Charlie. It's another clone. Or maybe the real him? No, I think it's him. They've kept him alive. Let's get him out of there. 
Hold it, Doctor. You're not going anywhere. Sorry, fake Charlie, but this is where we say goodbye. Is he dead? That depends on if you count him living in the first place. His whole mind was connected to and living off of the real Charlie, and I pulled the plug. <coughs> Charlie? Charlie, are you alright? It's me. It, it's the doctor. I'm here to get you out. Doctor? Doctor, is that you? Oh, thank God. I'm okay. And Sophie too, you're safe. You recognise us? I know everything that's happened today. I was hooked up to that other version of me. It was like a dream. Well, more like a nightmare. I wasn't in control, just watching as he lured you two here. A real-time feed directly to the host. That's how he was able to replicate your personality and memory so well. I... I was just a random subject to them. I'm fortunate enough to be picked for this. Don't know whether it's lucky or unlucky that I knew you. <laughs> well, you're certainly lucky I popped by. The TARDIS has a funny way of knowing where I'm needed. Can you stand? Right, Charlie, you need to get out of here fast. You're in no shape to fight. Follow the corridor outside to the right. Keep going, and you'll get to the ladder we came down. What about you? What are you going to do? Something dangerous. Take the clone's gun. Pretend to be him looking for us. Now go! Okay, be safe. Sophie, you should get out of here too. What? I'm not going anywhere. Where are you going? Theoretically, I should be able to overload the engines, causing a meltdown. We were in a woodland area when we came down here. And from seeing the size of this place, I'm positive it won't hit any buildings on the surface. Either way, I won't risk you. Now get going! If you risk your life to do this, then I'll be stuck here anyway. You'll be safer with someone else. What about the people who've been mind-controlled? You can't leave them down there. What happens then? Well aware of that. I'm going to sort that out now. Are you sure about staying here? Someone needs to watch your back. Keep looking. Search this place top to bottom and kill the intruders. Remember, obey my commands. Or are you? What? Yeah. Uh, done it now. Sophie, grab the gun. Throw it away. Got it. Oh. oh, you've got him. You've got him down. How'd you do that? Anusha Nikita. Comes in handy now and again. <clears throat> Let me go. Ah. Now, stay very still. I'm going to try and free you from the hypnotic mind control. Hands off my face! Hands off, hands off me. I'll kill you. Oh. There now. How are you feeling? Oh. I, I feel, I, I feel free. I'm free. Thank you, thank you. Oh, we've got to get out of here. Before that though, come with me. This console over here. Looks like it's got an intercom. I need you to get everyone else out of here. But, but are they being my controls or whatever's happening to them? I know, but you're their commander. They'll answer to the Daleks, but they seem to also answer to you. Act like you're still one of them. Tell the mind control units I've escaped, and order them all to evacuate to the surface. And say that the order cannot be countermanded. Go on. All hypnotic units. <clears throat> All hypnotic units. The doctor has still been located and he has escaped the facility to the surface. My orders are to evacuate immediately and pursue them. Repeat. All hypnotic units. Leave this facility and wait for further instructions from me. This order cannot be counteracted. There. It's done.
It's working. They're all leaving. Go on. Get out of here as quickly as you can. Don't look back. Thank you. When this place is destroyed, the signal controlling them will be gone. They won't remember any of this. What about that guy? I freed his mind just enough to help us out. We'll be fine after this. And as for the reanimated people? The best thing I can do for them is destroy this place. Put them to rest. Now, let's get that underway, shall we? There. React critical. That will take the Daleks out too. We should have enough time to get out. Got to look out! Exterminate the Doctor. Exterminate. Exterminate. Run! This way! In this room, quick! We're cornered! We can't get past one, let alone all three! You will not escape, Doctor. You will be defeated here. What can we do? I don't know. I don't know, there's... I don't think there's a way out of... Unless... Yes, yes! Please work! Harness emergency recall. I'm making some changes. Worth a shot. But she doesn't like short hops. Please don't let me down. You hear that? Oh, thank you. Well, that went better than it could've. One way to put it, I guess. How are you feeling? Alright now, I seem to have gotten over the worst of it. Thank you, Doc. I don't know where I'd be without you. Ah, uh, what are friends for? Weird to think this whole time you went with the real you. What was it like for you? Nightmarish. Seeing a version of myself lead you into danger and not being able to do anything about it. I'm just relieved to be out of there. Relieved to know you're okay, mate. Things seem to have cleared up well, at least. Yes, indeed. Everyone managed to escape safe and sound, and hypnosis is gone. They can return to their normal lives. The base didn't hurt anybody in its destruction, and all the technology from it is gone. Yeah, just a big sinkhole where it used to be. The papers are probably trying to figure it out right now. They'll just think it was natural. Looks like everything turned out okay. All in a day's work for you, right? More or less. What do you think, Sophie? Do you want to stay here a while longer? Well, I think I'll pass for now. But it was a nice trip, all things considered. I guess we should head off then. You could come along sometime, Charlie. It would be my pleasure. Trust me, I'd love to sometime. But right now I prefer to rest up and get back to normal. Rightly so. Goodbye, Charlie. Until next time. See you soon, Doc. And you too, Sophie. Take good care of him. Ah, I will do. See you later, Charlie. You doing okay? Yeah, all good now. Listen, Sophie, about back there, I I got angry and impatient with you. I I shouldn't have done that, but I was panicked. Don't get caught up on that. Those things were dangerous and you needed to stop them. You were doing the right thing. Now I think about it, there's one more thing I want to do. TARDIS key. Your own one. Take it. Well, really? Thank you. Wow. Well, you're along for the ride now. Don't mind that it looks a bit different than mine. It works all the same. But it's yours now. Unless you still think keys are old-fashioned. Nah, 
I'm starting to like old fashioned. Come on. Let's get our things and get back to the TARDIS. Right. Let's get you going then, old girl. You do mean the TARDIS when you say old girl, right? Yeah, it would be weird if I didn't. Doctor, I've been thinking about the effects of time travel. Oh yes, go on. Well, if that plan had gone on any longer, who knows how many people would have gone missing. How devastating that could be. Good job we showed up then, isn't it? You're a time traveller. Tell me, how much can you change history before it gets too much? When cause and effect takes hold? Hmm. Well, I'm a time lord. We have a unique relationship with time. You have senses, right? Sight and sound and that. Well, a time lord can almost feel, see time travel like it's a sense. Mm, yeah, you're gonna have to elaborate. Give me an example. Okay, hmm. Did you learn about the assassination of JFK in your time? I remember it, yeah. Let's say you go back to change that. You prevent him from ever being killed. Now, you grow up with him being fine. Now let me ask you this. Why would you ever want to go back in time to save someone who didn't need saving? What reason would you have for doing that? Oh, okay, I see. That's complicated. Yes. Now you've created a paradox. So what if I made sure that I did that? Maybe leave clues to myself. Uh, maybe interested in the idea. Want to be the person to save him. Maybe even go back and tell myself directly. That's on the right lines. Very tricky lines, but getting there. Now you have an engineered time loop. You have created your own destiny and ensure that it happens. Of course, we're leaving out the details of what happens to history now you've changed it in this scenario. Well, yeah. Tricky, you see. So, so surely any form of time travel is super dangerous then, at any point? You'd think so, butterfly effect and all that, but no, there's more you can get away with than you think. You see, History is like a big building, connected by thousands of small strands. Lots of it isn't necessary to keep things the same way. There's just some big key points that are necessary. And if you change them, then the building of history falls apart. But everything else in between, history can sort itself out. Ah, I think I'm getting it now. I'm getting good at this. I like to put it like this. Time travel is a gift. Like any special gift, you have to take responsibility for it. Be wise with it. But at the end of the day, it's a gift. Enjoy it. So where to next? Anywhere exciting. Hello, I'm Kieran Harvey. I am the creator and writer behind Doctor Who The Human Factor, and I also play the Doctor. 
Hi, I'm Sophie Nichols and I play Sophie Williams in uh, The Human Factor, The Doctor's Companion, and I'm also um, the cover artist. Uh, hello, I'm Charlie Pearson. I play Charlie Anderson in the story and I am the better companion. Which is just false, really. Very true. No. Welcome to no. the behind the scenes. We constantly <coughs> argue. We hate each other. Yeah. Yeah. These two are a house on fire. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, um, how was it? How was it like uh, being part of this project? I think when you asked me to be the, the companion, I was very excited because we're obviously all big Doctor Who fans and I think to actually get into character of the Doctor's companion, which plays such an important role unlike other people's... Um, <laughs> <laughs> slid that in there very nicely, I must say. So, um, I think it was it was passionate um, and exciting, and I think you can see the passion from you as well. So you can tell that there's a lot of heart in this project. So it's nice to work well, work on it. Thanks. Yeah, I'd have to say exactly the same. I recently started watching uh, Doctor Who again. Wait, the, you'd have to say the same. So. Oh no, I'd have to say the same of enjoying it. Right. Um, yeah, you know, I started watching Doctor Who again recently, so. Uh, was, you know, proper still it, it, back into it again. The passion was there, so I was really happy when he asked me to play uh, a, a character that returns throughout, a bit like a, a Captain Jack, you know, mm. someone that all the fans love more than the actual <laughs> companions who only last a season. <laughs> yeah, he's that sort of just that that man on the side, the the guy, the bloke you can rely on, or the old reliable. There's a sort of a sixth, seventh Doctor returning character, sort of like that. And Sophie, you're uh, you're the companion. Uh, I wanted <laughs> I wanted someone sort sort for from the near future because uh, yep. I wanted a bit of diversity with like sort of style, uh, not just someone from the modern time. Uh, I, the sort of background I gave for Sophie's character was uh, it's about sixty-ish years into the future, so the sort of uh, uh, some, lifestyle and yeah. technology. The sort of frame of reference I gave was the game Overwatch, so imagine that as sort of the type of future where she comes from. Uh, so yeah, this was uh, quite a, a very fun passion project that um, might not have even existed given uh, different parameters for yeah. our college mm -hmm. work. Yeah. yeah, and with uh, lockdown, as we are currently recording this, uh, we've, it's a uh, mid uh, first just quarter kind of getting out of it now coming yeah. out of it currently so yeah. we're all yeah. back in college Nearly able to be through. with each other and record things that we wouldn't have been able to do if we were still in lockdown yeah mm. so uh, yeah this this uh, was uh, my idea I'm the main driving force behind it um, in the past two years maybe I've gotten heavily into uh, the audio drama genre thanks to, uh, uh, for Doctor Who mainly, uh, the main people behind it are Big Finish Productions. I'm heavily big fan of theirs. But I've also seen that um, uh, there are lots of other people online who use audio as a, a way to make fan creations because it is a fairly easy uh, jo uh, genre that you can do stuff with and so there's lots of people who use it to make lots of Doctor Who fan stuff so I was sort of inspired by that even the name uh, sort of, uh, Big Finish Productions KH Productions I have I've found it uh, I could parody that sort of so I came up with the story how did this happen the story just sort of came to me very sort of naturally Initially, I started out by thinking of different conversations. Because it's an audio drama, I, uh, I fought heavily on dialogue, interactions between characters. I started thinking of uh, interactions between the Doctor and Companion, started thinking about how my Doctor and my Companion would sort of act, uh, sort of frame where we are. I'm fairly uh, stable, I'm like... Maybe I've gone through a season beforehand, and me and Sophie, we're about uh, halfway through our first series, so we know each other, but we still need to get used to each other. Um, sort of details of the story just sort of came out of that. The dialogue then sprung to the idea of where it would be. Uh, I, I, I love the 80s. 
Yeah, I. Who doesn't? Yeah. yeah. I. I mean, I even talk about in. I make sure to say in the story like. <laughs> I know it's. Sorry, uh, I hit his foot by accident. <laughs> by, by accident. Yeah. It was by accident. <laughs> These two really <laughs> hate each other. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Don't know what you're talking about. Nah, you're good. Death stairs <laughs> all around. Yeah, I talk about in the story that it's not perfect, there are problems, but that, then again, when it isn't there. But yeah, I love the 80s, I love the style and the colour and movies and everything. So I wanted it set in the 80s. Um, I came up with then Charlie's character as someone to then get information about the world and then someone to interact with. Um, the Daleks sort of came about, A, because they're easy, like... They're an established character, you don't have to make something new, and it's you just need like voice changes for it. And uh, B, because why wouldn't you? It's the Daleks. <laughs> Very good point. Good points. Best villain, I must say. Mm. As I was working One on the script, the I uh, shared it a lot with these two and other people. I uh, got feedback on it. Um, actually, got lots of good points on it. Like, uh, Charlie, you came up with being the doppelganger. Mm. I- I'd like. 20% credit and uh, 10% of the revenue from this, please. Well, we're going to have to uh, work that out some other time. Yeah, I want to sign a contract, please. Thank you. What about me? You're just the companion. And the cover artist. Thank right. you very what, much. What I've then? had more input than you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, actually, talk about that, Sophie. Um, so first part of the cover art um, was just a photo shoot. Uh, I wanted yeah. to have a lot of fun with this, so mm. I sort of brainstormed what I wanted to do with my outfits and others' outfits. Um, my character's sort of the young heroic doctor, because I'd, pref- I'd prefer if I was actually in the show to be an older doctor, but I'm not. I'm, I'm young, so I acted my age to sort of... Peter Davison, Paul McGann, David yeah. Tennant, Jodie Whittaker, mm-hmm. sort of young heroic doctor. But I liked the sort of uh, simple, sort of almost Victorian outfit, kind of like Paul McGann's. It, I kind of had this image with um, a flat cap, a sort of like Eddie Redmayne in uh, Fantastic Beasts. Yes, yeah. that fits perfectly mm-hmm. actually. Yeah, Definitely. I sort of had this vision of some of someone like that. So yeah, I sort of had that idea for the outfit and. Um, and a few little bonus pieces like uh, TARDIS keys and my own Sonic made out of uh, all custom toy pieces. Psychic paper. Yep. Yeah, every all the lot, the whole shebang. <laughs> and then we came in for a photo shoot, uh, and it was a lot of fun. Um, depending on, uh, hopefully, you should be seeing those right now on screen. You'll be seeing our many beautiful, gorgeous poses and photos. Some not so good, but... <laughs> <sighs> I was on about my own then. Yeah, so was I. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I just I bought a ton of stuff and had fun. Interesting. Yes, very fun, very interesting. Um, facial expressions, I think. Uh, oh, I can, I can think of a certain uh, kicking one <laughs> that comes to mind. <laughs> oh, that was good fun. That yeah, was very good fun. Yeah, Sophie, uh, how's... Um, wh- I, I should say, wh- how's work going on the cover art? Because uh, as of recording this, we're obviously not done. We're uh, still a little way yeah. off from the end. So I've kind of given, been given some um, examples from Kieran um, as to what I, I should go off, some big finish um, kind of covers that I could uh, use for an example. Um, it's been good. I'd say Kieran's also been very clear on, on what he wants and the colour scheme. Um even to the photo shoot, um, he knew what he wanted, so we, we did that, and I've just executed that really. So I've created, I finished one poster, which is kind of um, more of the test run, but still an option. And then from that, I will develop that into two final products. So the first product will be the three of us, so Charlie, um, myself, and Kieran. And the second one will just be Kieran and I. Um, mainly just to give Kieran a bit of diversity, kind of depends which one he wants. And if this is created into um, like more episodes, it gives him the option to do so, as Charlie won't be in all of them because I am the better companion. So I'll say the recurring <laughs> companion more than the better, but you know, we, we, well, we'll, we'll agree to disagree. 
So, <coughs> yeah, I, I think, uh, no, it's exciting. It's nice to create something Doctor Who related, for sure. Um, I must say, I, I do I do like it very much. <laughs> mm. And we're also going to talk about a few people who aren't here right now. So, uh, today with us in the recording, we had uh, Callum Moffat, who was the voice of the Fug, the mind control Fug. Very good accent. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> very good accent. <laughs> Gave us a good chuckle every now and again. <laughs> he was a uh, good fun. Thank, uh, big thank you to Callum. And uh, also, there's Frank New. Uh, now, Frank New. Uh, hopefully, if things go according to plan, he is the voice of the Daleks. He provided uh, them and the sound effects in order to create them. And Frank also uh, created the titles. Uh, at the moment, we've seen uh, like uh, prototype versions of the titles, and um, I love them. What do you guys think? I love how it is, a, I'd say, a perfect balance of, uh, from what I've seen of old Who uh, title, it's a perfect balance between new and old Who. It's got yeah, the I agree. two. It's got the best. It's a, it's the best bit, uh, mix of both, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I, I really like it. I think, um, as you say, it's got both classic and new Who involved, and I think that really shows kind of the generation of um, what well, the style you're going for. Kind of, in a way, if you if you overanalyze it, it shows that we're going back to the '80s because you're using classic Who and um, yeah, sort of a mix in the middle. Yeah, and then obviously the new Who. We've gone from the future to that. I think, uh, no, I think it's brilliant. Mm. So yeah, massive thank you for Frank for creating those titles. They're brilliant. Um, yeah, is there anything else you guys would like to talk about? Um, no. I mean, do you want to go through the production, how that worked, and how we did it? I know we brought up that Callum was with us, but do you want to go through that? Yes. So uh, we began with production with just the idea, I presented it to people. Uh, I asked a few people like Sophie and Frank initially if they wanted to be involved. Straight away we said yes. <laughs> so yeah, we uh, worked together and asked a few people, a few other people if they wanted to get involved. I asked uh, Charlie and Callum and uh, they were both very interested. So uh, I set to work on the script and uh, spent a fair amount of time working on the script, on the dialogue and uh, got feedback from both of you two to create a second one. Uh, and then spent time behind the scenes also working on uh, gathering sound effects and creating my own sound effects too. So yeah, we've got various different things involved and um, hopefully uh, after this I'll start working on the editing side of things to fit it all together, make it sound gorgeous and make everything come out how I wanted it to. I think once uh, you've done all the sounds and you've got everything sorted, I think it's really start to come together. Good. I agree. Excited to hear the final product. Definitely. Mm. I think we've got everything. Is there anything else you guys want to say? No, I'm, I'm quite happy. I think... Um, I overall... feel like you... Um, you've, I know you said this with your... Um, re rescripts. Yeah, that's the word. Rescripts? Rewrites. You know what I'm on about. Uh, I feel like you've um, taken constructive criticism really well and changed things that yeah. uh, to sound better. So, yeah, I think you've done really well on that and you've adapted to it all really well. Yeah, I think overall um, the project's been very clear throughout the whole way. We've known what we're doing and when, we've do when we're doing it. Mm -hmm. um, because this is a collaboration project, we, we planned it so... Uh, Charlie and I filmed our podcast in the morning and Kieran had filmed his in the afternoon so we could like uh, space out throughout the whole day so that was good kind of um, management on all of our all behalves um, but no I think overall Kieran's showing great passion throughout this whole project and that's really shown through with how uh, great the script is and it generally feels like an actual Doctor Who episode so well done thank you well done indeed yeah and so I think we were about wrapped up there. Perfect. Uh, thank you, thank you guys for inv uh, getting involved in this. Thank, thank you, you for to asking. Callum thank you very much for their yeah. uh, contributions. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, and uh, thank you for listening slash uh, watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed Doctor Who: The Human Factor. Woo! -woo. <laughs> <laughs>